Welcome, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> well, it's been another week of healing. And I feel like the show was given to me just for that, so it's, it's pretty beautiful. This past week's theme, or one of them, was guilt. And there was a series of events that happened this week um, for my unconscious guilt to be exposed. And I found out later that of the school, because it's one mind, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I had a series of events. Um, one of them basically was that the way I look was um, threatened. And it took, me, it took me way back to the belief that I believe if I don't look a certain way, then I won't be loved. And um, I think I was just raised in a family where I guess, you know, we're, we're all put in our circumstances so that we can heal whatever we've come to heal. So I, I don't want to concentrate on the story, but, you know, I just, maybe I can say a little bit. I was just overheard my dad say I was the ugly duckling once, and I just had this beautiful sister. And, you know, I, I was just to get in touch with, with this healing. But as I, as I got older, I got into spirituality and read The Secret, and I, I made myself different. I, like, changed my mind, and all of a sudden people thought I was pretty. But, you know, I always saw the same person in the mirror, and I just wanted to be loved. And so I thought that if I looked a certain way, I would be loved because that's what I learned growing up. So, um, yeah, I did something to try to um, look better and... It didn't work out, and I felt a terror so deep, like, like the separation from God, like heartbreak. Like it was no different. It was no different than any other terror I had ever felt. So what I got to, yeah, I, I went in. I went in. I hid for two days in my um, room, praying and just going inside with Jesus and, and asking, what, what is this fear that I, that I won't be loved if I don't look a certain way? And yeah, it was, <laughs> my God, it was intense. And um, yeah, when I, when I came out of my room, I, yeah, I immediately went to an expression session with the school and found out that, um, you know, childhood trauma and abuse had been exposed. When one started it, everyone else felt safe to expose their own childhood um, yeah, traumas. And it was just really profound how it's, it's all one mind and we're all healing basically the same thing a lot of the time. I feel honored right now because and so, so grateful that I'm given the opportunity to look at my un unconscious guilt because it is unconscious. And we've heard all of our lives that, that we can't know God with, unless we know ourselves as guiltless. And yet we don't even, like normally we're like, I don't feel guilty, I feel fine. It's, it's underneath there, hidden. And I asked for the ultimate healing before I left La Casa, before I started this new chapter in my life, I asked for this. And let me tell you, every week, I am just hitting up against a lot, and, um, and yet my purpose is out front. I want healing more than I want to be comfortable, and I have to keep making that choice again and again. Um, I want to accept what the Holy Spirit has given me to heal, um, and yet I, I do want to be open to whatever is given for me to feel joyful. Um, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know my way out, right? So I'm just patiently there with the feelings and, and uh, being willing to embrace them, actually, completely. 
and, and continually hand them over to spirit because that's my only job. I mean, what, what, a, um, what a miracle that something happened that I could allow my unconscious guilt to come up. And during this two days, there was just attack in my mind upon all those that seemingly loved me. You know, my parents, my partners, you know, it was like, you don't love me. You never did. And so I had to sit with that. Attack was in the mind and, you know, just knowing for a fact that it's not true, that it's projection. And, and asking the spirit to heal my mind. So with the, with the purpose out front, we often want to, um, yeah, we ask for healing and then we often want to run away, right? Because it's too intense. But the minute you hit that point in your journey where you're willing to stay and face it, I, there's just a gratitude that comes up because somewhere deep inside, you know that this is, this is actually heading on its way out. It's on, I mean, not kind of on its way out, like it's, it's, it's leaving. God's son is guiltless and innocent. And we've been promised that, that God only wants our happiness. So I'm really, yeah, I'm excited. And that's different for me, but I do want to read this section of the Course. I have a couple to read to you today, but um, what I just shared with you, I found this in the Course, and it says, Fail not in your function of loving in a loveless place made out of darkness and deceit, for thus are darkness and deceit undone. I couldn't help thinking of that song. We found love in a hopeless place. We found love in a hopeless place. So that's what we're, we're doing. We're going to find love in a hopeless place. Fail not yourself, but instead offer to God and you his blameless son. Before you make any decisions for yourself, Remember that you have decided against your function in heaven. And then consider carefully whether you want to make decisions here. So we have made a decision every morning, right, to, to decide with the Holy Spirit. You decide for God for me. So before you make any decisions by yourself, make sure you know that that the Holy Spirit has agreed with you, not the ego. So your function here is only to, 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 to decide against deciding what you want in recognition that you do not know. Which is the biggest one, right? Because we want to be right. So you have to come to a place where you've actually surrendered to that. Like, I don't know. I want you to show me the way. It changes everything there. How then can you decide what you should do? Leave all decisions to the one who speaks for God and for your function as he knows it. So will he teach you to remove the awful burden you have laid upon yourself by not loving the Son of God and by trying to teach him guilt instead of love. So you can see what you're doing to yourself when you recognize how you're treating your brother. And I've got some examples of this. Because you're not going to know yourself as guiltless and innocent until you see your brother that way first. That's the only way. So that's our practice, right? Give up this frantic and insane attempt that cheats you of the joy of living with your God and Father and of waking gladly to his love and holiness that join together as the truth in you, making you one with him. When you have learned how to decide with God, all decisions become as easy and as right as breathing, 
That's his promise to us. There is no effort and you will be led as gently as if you were being carried down a quiet path in summer. I can't tell you how many times I remember David just repeating this over and over again. It's like Jesus telling us over and over again, this is what you are promised, so go for it. The Holy Spirit will not delay in answering your every question what to do. He knows and he will tell you and then do it for you. So that's why I was saying last week when I was in my terror, just coming back into that presence and inviting the Holy Spirit in. And every five minutes, he will tell you your way out. He will tell you what to do and promise, I promise you when you're in that much terror, that's when you will be able to be that vigilant for God. You won't have another choice. Our pain is our gift. Our pain is our gift. It forces us. It forces us to be so present and to be shown. It's the only way we're going to be shown. I mean, that's, that's how it's been for me. I, I have a huge amount of resistance. So, but it's all crumbling. He knows and he will tell you and then do it for you. You've got to love that. You don't even have to do it. You who are tired will find this is more restful than sleep, which I don't get a lot of lately. And I'm sure when you're going through these deep healings, I'm up at, you know, if I, I even try to go to bed at 8.30, I'm up at 11. It doesn't matter. You don't need sleep. You know, Jesus has you up for a reason. Get up. Light a candle. Give him your mind and your heart. You have no need for sleeping only waking and healing. And if you're up every night, rejoice. You know, you're healing this entire dream. Yeah, and I read something in the course the other day where I was just like, whoa, this is a dream. Just, you know, you don't even have to. Yeah, let me just finish. I'm very excited. Um, let's see. Okay, unless you are guiltless, you cannot know God. When I read that, I was like, okay, I'm... Um, Thank you for letting the guilt come up to be seen. Unless you are guiltless, you cannot go, know God, whose will is that you know him. Therefore, you must be guiltless. Yet if you do not accept the necessary conditions for knowing him, you have denied him and do not recognize him, though he is all around you. He cannot be known without his son, whose guiltlessness is the condition for knowing him. Accepting his son as guilty is denial of the father so complete that knowledge is swept away from recognition in the very mind where God himself has placed it. If you would but listen and learn how impossible this is, do not endow him with attributes you understand. You made him not, and anything you understand is not of him. Okay, I don't think I'm going to have time to read all this. I've got other things. It just says that it's very, very important. The guiltless and the guilty are totally incapable of understanding one another. Each perceives the other like himself, making both unable to communicate because each sees the other unlike the way he sees himself. Okay, so our task is to unleash the guilt that's hidden in the unconscious, to see it, and to hand it over to the Holy Spirit. We can't skip this step. It's very, very important. So um, I did see Carolina up on the screen earlier, and I want to tell you um, just a little story about a student in the school, Carolina. Um, who is just 100% devoted to awakening and healing her mind. And when she first came with us she, to spend time with us, she really, she just, it was so hard for her. She, you know, she had lived a life of depression and suicidal thoughts, and it was so hard for her to embrace her function. And, and you know, she was just struggling with everything and not fully taking it, it on. And, 
And then, you know, with much, much healing and perseverance, there she is, she found a way to fully embrace her function and just be relieved of all suicidal thoughts. Like she really found a joy that she had never found by embracing her functions. And I had talked to you about it on the show another time. Can you wave, Carolina? I don't know if, if y'all can even show who she is, but it would be just helpful for her to just be seen. And um, she's a precious, precious soul, and she just has been giving it 100% she's, since she's been with us about eight or nine months ago. There she is. Hi, Carolina. And um, she was just falling apart asking for a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think it was yesterday. Is that correct, Carolina? I think it is. Not if it is yet. And... We had been working um, together for a while about another mighty companion who had come and she was just, this other brother for her was bringing up so much anger and so much annoyance and just to the point where it was intolerable. So, you know, you, you don't have to do what you're not ready to do. So, um, I was, it, Holy Spirit was very gentle. I took her out of the same room. I took her out of the functions with this person. And still she comes in just about to break down because she was just so frustrated just at the small amounts of time she had to spend with this brother. And just wanted to tell this brother the way they should be acting and healing and what was best for them. And I reminded her of a little girl named Carolina that had come to us and was the exact same way in a lot of ways. And I said, how you look upon your brother is how you will look upon yourself. Would you want compassion? You know, do you have that in you? And, and you're literally only seeing yourself. You can't stand it because you're, you're only seeing what's in your mind. Your brother is not in front of you. And you know, you know, we just went through it for a while. And finally, when the resistance kind of started to loosen, you know, she, she got in touch with the fact that she wanted her assignments back with her brother. She wanted to heal this, that she actually could see it was an opportunity. It was like, I'm like, look, this is Jesus Christ appearing before you with a gift saying, do you want to heal your mind or do you want to not be uncomfortable right now? That's what I was talking about. You put your purpose out front. If your purpose and the one thing you want more than anything else is to heal your mind, then you say yes to this contraction and this annoyance and this heartbreak and this fear and this, I don't want this. That's okay. But, you know, after you do it enough times, you, you're going to be willing to say yes every time. And then at the end of our conversation, Carolina was like, look, I want, I want all the functions back. I want to take this on 100%. I want it completely because, you know, the only way to see the innocence and guiltlessness and love in yourself is to see it in your brother first, to see the Christ in your brother. And that's why community is such a speed up. You know, it's beautiful if you want to take a hermitage and be, just be with your course book and pray. And that is a step. But, you know, eventually you have to put the book down it's the practical application. And I can tell you right now, if you put out your prayer, I want the healing of my mind. Bring me everything I need for that. If your daughter or your friend or your lover or your mother is in front of you, that is your way out. And even better if they're pissing you off. I promise you, the ones who are here to give you gentle love are great. Thank you, Jesus, for those. But the ones who piss you off are your saviors. And you will see an ancient hate turn to love. And it's the only way. So what, you'll know when you're done with your hermitage, when you've read the book back and forth and you're feeling like movement and, and it's not exercising anymore, right? So you'll know. And then spirit will lead you out where you can extend. It could be you start with the relation, you know, a community of two, just you and your partner. Honey, that'll bring up enough stuff to heal the world. That's what I was telling Carolina. Be grateful this isn't a lover. You're okay. You can go, you know, you don't, you don't have to 
be that close. Um, so it's very gentle. Just take these opportunities as they are um, given to you because they're everything. So speaking of that a little more, chapter 22, Salvation and the Holy Relationship says, Take pity on yourself, so long enslaved. Rejoice whom God hath joined, have come together, and need no longer look on sin apart. So listen to this. No two can look on sin together, for they could never see in it the same place and time. Sin is strictly individual perception, seen in the other, yet believed by each to be within himself. And each one seems to make a different error, and one the other cannot understand. Brother, it is the same, made by the same, and forgiven for its maker in the same way. The holiness of your relationship forgives you and your brother, undoing the effects of what you both believed and saw. And with their going is the need for sin gone with them. Okay, so I got to read more, sorry. For an unholy relationship is based on differences where each one thinks the other has what he has not. They come together, each to complete himself and rob the other. They stay until they think that there is nothing left to steal and then move on. And so they wander through a world of strangers, unlike themselves, living with their bodies, perhaps, under a common roof that shelters neither. In the same room, and yet a world apart. Okay, so this is what we don't want, right? And I got, yeah, I got to see that so clearly in my, in my last relationship, when I could see how, yeah, no matter how much love was given, you know, I had a feeling of being unloved, of being abandoned, of being not in the mind and forgotten. And when, you know, these relationships end is where the real healing begins. Because you get to really look at your mind and what you believe. And I asked to see everything I believed. And in this, I was journaling last night. And I was writing to God. And I said, and I didn't want to write these words because I didn't want to know what I believed. I wrote, God, you don't love me. And he said, you don't love you. And I said, God, I feel like you've abandoned me. And he said, you abandoned you. And I said, but it feels like you've forgotten me. And he said, you forgot about you. You wanted to take someone else's. You wanted to take, you wanted to be someone else. And I live inside of you. And you will only find me by loving yourself. That's where I live. And so, thank you, Jesus, for allowing the guilt to come up. I started to write a song that I did. It just came out in a song, and then I was like, shit, trying to finish it this morning. I was like, there's just no way. But, but I'm going home for Christmas next week, so I won't be here. So maybe I'll try to pre-record the show and, and, and finish that song for you guys while I'm gone. I don't know how it'll look, but yeah, I'm just so grateful for the show. Thank you. Because it's um, given me an opportunity to really go deep into the, my mind every single week and um, share you got, with you guys what I'm healing. And I, and I realized that I was starting everything anew on January 23rd of this year. And so I had like a month left for all this deep healing. So I put out a prayer. I want to heal everything. I want to see everything I believe before I go. Now, God, man, it's like, it's, it's intense, but I want it. And like, why delay? I mean, it's painful to delay. And I'm in a, I'm in a cocoon a womb of, of gentleness for this healing. And so I'm so very grateful to God just for this 
opportunity to see what I believe and to have it healed. Um, thank you. I guess I'll just say that I'll be going on tour um, on January 23rd. And just to put it out there, like what we have already is a, is a four-day retreat in Edmonton, Canada with Sarah Humert's group, March 21st to March 24th. And we also have a four-day retreat in Portugal with Ellen and Jan, March 28th to March 31st. Um, and then before that, um, in the U.S., when I, I will land on the 23rd, there's just, I'm in discussions right now for a possible three-day retreat with Susan Bartles in Cincinnati. Um, and then because I don't know if that's going if or when that's going to happen, I'm waiting to plan Florida, but the ones that I have in mind and that have contacted me for possible retreats and gatherings are Jacksonville, Florida with J.R. Remington, St. Augustine with Sharon Kramer, Delray, Florida with Kyle and Kyle Nordwall and Joe Tedesco, and Florida will come more clear once I find out about Cincinnati, but that's that's the upcoming tour, um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if there'll be a show while I'm on tour, but we'll see. I'm very open because all I want is the healing because I put my purpose out front. So I'm not really going on a tour or getting married, right? These are the symbols that I've been given, and I'm super excited. But yeah, even in the moments that I can feel super grateful for that, I just want to embrace that too because there's so much that's come up to be healed and I don't want to push that away either. So thank you so much for joining me this week on Humbled and I will see you guys next week, I think. I love you.